Okay, so hello and welcome back to another Unity tutorial. In this video, we'll be looking at Unity's new UI Builder and UI Toolkit packages. I'll be covering Unity's own sample project where they show some different use cases and you can actually go and look into the code and how it's all set up. And then after you've watched the video, in the comments you can let me know whether you want to see me show you how to make from scratch either some menu screens or health bars or whatever. And with all that said, let's get started. But first I'd like to thank Admix for sponsoring this video. Admix is a platform designed to help devs monetize their game without interrupting the player's experience by seamlessly placing ads inside the game world. It takes less than one hour to get set up and with no coding required, just drag and drop the ad placements into your game. It's also fully integrated with Unity and Unreal Engine. There's also an online dashboard with plenty of analytics to help you optimize as you go. Check it out by following the link in the description down below. So I'll put a link down below so you guys can go download this project and have a look around. It starts off with a menu screen. Obviously it's got this logo here, it's got background. We've got these buttons which have the like on hover, the text goes gray, we'll have a look at that in a minute. We've got the different buttons where we click about and it then switches to this screen and it actually scrolls up so it animates, it has all that. It's a different description, we've got the scroll here, we can hit back. Options, you have this, back, start. We go to the scene. Now I could make it wider but this is designed for mobile, so the UI will look a bit odd if I put it in widescreen, because as I said, it is designed for mobile. But we can try it like this. Uh, it's not ideal when we when we try dragging sometimes, but you drag your units over the board, release. And all this UI here is using the new UI system. Same with health bars in here. And if when I, when I win, the uh, end game screen will also do the same. So let's just try and win. Obviously, this game is very easy. You can just spam drag in all the units and you'll you'll win very quickly. Let's just give it a second. I win. It plays the outro kind of animation because I won. And then the screen pops up, match over. The winner is Team Red. Then main menu fades in. And we go back to the main menu, which, as I said, it's designed for mobile. So let's just put it back like this. Okay, now we can put this to the side. And let's have a look at how this works. So the first thing is if you're making your own project uh, using this new system, uh, you need to be using, I think you can use 2020.1. I mean, this is in 2020.1, so yes, you can. Uh, it's also in 2020.2 and onwards. And if we go into the project assets, um, uh, sorry, back from assets and go to the packages, if we look in the manifest JSON by opening that in Notepad, the two packages you need is uh, community UI and UI builder. And these are the versions. If you just put in these versions and there just happens to be, there so happens to be new versions from when you're watching this, then if you actually, once you've got them, go into the package manager, it will automatically tell you when there's new versions available. So we just give this a second. And you see, uh, yeah, there's a new version of UI Builder. So I could go ahead now and download that if I wanted to. So once you've got the packages, how does it actually work? If we look in this scene, this is the uh, title screen, we have the camera, the light, and the UI. And the UI is just one game object with no children, and this is the entire UI. If we turn it off and on, it goes off and on. But we have two components. We have the event system, which allows input to the UI. That's kind of standard. But for this, you have to use the UI toolkit event system as opposed to the built-in event system. And uh, the UI document, this is what links your actual UI to the game because the UI is actually stored in your project now. So we have these settings, which they have here, and these settings are like global settings for your UI. You can right click create UI toolkit panel settings. And I, when I tested this myself, I just left it on default settings. And I think these might also be the default settings. So just make one of those and drag it in. And then you have the source asset, which is the actual document for the UI. And these are just .uxml files. And in this project, uh, I can't actually seem to create one if I create UI toolkit, it doesn't show up. Uh, when I tested in my own project, it did. So maybe when you check it will also you know, be on this create menu. If it isn't, you could just make a UXML file. So just you know, go into your text editor, like so go, go into your file explorer. You could just make a new uh, file and just end it in .uxml and it should work just fine. And once you've made it, we can then open it up. So UXML open and you get the new UI builder window like this. And this is the menu screen. And if we look over here, this is the kind of hierarchy of the UI. So we've got the title screen manager, which is the um, root itself, which has three different screens. It's got the title screen, which is what we're looking at here. And then it's also got this options and this about screen. And the options and about screen obviously come on when you click options and about and go back. 
And the way it's actually managed for clicking the buttons and showing one, hiding the other, it's actually done in a script. So this title screen manager, you see it's got a little hashtag for sharp, C sharp. Uh, th there's actually a C sharp script in this uh, project. So let's go to the project. And if we go to scripts UI, there's this title screen manager. And the code here is quite complicated. Obviously, I, I would imagine this code's gonna get a lot simpler over time. This is in preview. And this is inheriting from visual element, which is what allows you to use it in the UI. And um, I'm not gonna go into every line here, but what they do is they use this thing here. And this is like jQuery, if any of you have done web development, you can refer to a particular component. So here they're referring to these different uh, screens, the title, options, and about screen using the names. And if you look back in Unity, sorry for jumping around a lot, but I kind of have to for this. Uh, they've given these names, title screen, option screen, and about screen. So you can actually refer to those in the code here. And then if you look, for example, down here, they can set the style display to be none. And this is very, this is very familiar if you have done web development, because this actually uses CSS to do the UI. And if you don't know CSS, you can do most of this pretty much all actually by just changing stuff in the editor. They give you tools for it here. So what I'll do is I'll close the root and I'll go into the actual title screen, um, which is in, well, let me try and find this, title screen, like this. And you see this has the screen, then it has the panel of buttons, then it has the start options and about button. And if I click preview, you can actually see this working where I mouse over the start button and the text goes gray. So how this kind of works is you have classes. So if we look right now on the, the button, it has these different classes. It has button, unity-button, and unity-text-element. And if we look up here at the top left, we've, uh, well not we, but Unity have written their own logic, their own uh, styles here, so that if something has the button class, then it has these properties. It aligns like this, it has this size, this uh, margin and padding, you can set all this up. It has this text, so size 32. Obviously, if I change that, you'll see it change. So all of these have the button class. So anything that's button class has this text. But then notice how they say uh, button here, hover. So this means simply when you're hovering something with the button class, this happens, the style changes. Now, these little um, white little lines on the side show you which things are affected. So for example, when I mouse over it, notice how the size doesn't change, but the color does. Even though on button hover, the size is smaller, but that's because it's not got this white line. It's not an actual modified thing. If I said, when you hover, the size goes to 77, then obviously that's what's going to happen. But because if I go back, I can right click size and unset it. The only thing that changes is the color goes gray. So that's how that works for the hovering of the buttons. And if we look down at the bottom left, you've got the standard and this project thing in the library. So standard are the built-in components that you can build your UI up from. So you can drag in uh, a visual element is kind of just like an empty game object, I guess. It's what the screen is in the button panel. You've got obviously scroll view, which they use in the about. List view for, I guess, listing different things beneath it. IMG U container. I don't know much about this, but I think this is how you can mix old and new UI because I if I'm not mistaken, I think this is the old UI system, what it's called, maybe I'm wrong there. Um, and then down here, you've got the very common things. You can add a label, button, toggle, scroll bar, text field, fold out, slider, min max slider. And I'm sure they're gonna add more and more things to this. So it's really easy for me now to just drag in a toggle here. And then I've got a toggle. Obviously I'd have to mess with the actual uh, positioning, scaling, margin, padding to have it go somewhere useful. But I've got a little uh, a toggle bar down here. And what they've actually done is they've taken this entire page, this title screen, and they've made it because it's a, its own asset. You can actually add that into other ones, just like how you can have prefabs in prefabs. So that's how in their title screen manager, what they've done is, let's not save, in the title screen manager, they've clicked project here. And this shows you all your assets in your project. You can actually mouse over to preview them, like the health UI, the different options and settings. And they could mouse over their title screen. And that's what they did. They dragged that in here. And that's how they have their title options and about screen in here. So they've made them all these screens separately and dragged them all in to here. And then they simply just enable and disable their styles when they click on the different buttons. 
if you remember in the code, it was changing the style from flex to non. So if we look over here, we could actually do it ourselves manually. So if you mouse over display, it says flex and non. So it's dot display dot flex or non. So title is currently on, but I can put it to flex and I can go to options and then put that on. I could also turn them all on, but obviously that wouldn't be ideal. Now this one overlays the other one. Uh, I can put them all on, but obviously as I said, this one overlays. Uh, so if I turn off the about screen, then it goes back to this. Turn off the option screen, it goes back to this. Uh, I accidentally dragged that as a child. Uh, that should be a child there. And to be honest, the actual designing of the UI doesn't get more, much more complicated than that. It's just a case of adding the components you want and just positioning them, doing all the classes for styling. And yeah, again, you don't have to write any actual CSS. You can simply do it all in the editor over here with these different uh, toolbars or different options. The main other thing to cover is how you actually have, for example, the start menu uh, go to a different scene because uh, it's in the here, but I didn't really cover it much. So when you get something using the query here, so for example, you can get the start button, you can then also call register callback on it. And with that, you can then pass in a different uh, a type of event. So you have here a click event, obviously there's, there's gonna be plenty of others. And the click event, you can simply then say, when it happens, what to do? Well, I want to call the start game method, which is down here. And then they've got something saying like, if we're in the editor, then make sure we're actually playing to load the scene. Uh, if we're not in the editor, then we just load the scene. Um, and if we're in the editor and we're not playing, then we just log saying that's what we would be doing. So it's very easy just to say onto a particular element, register for a particular callback. So you could query any element and just listen for a click event on that element to do something, whatever you like. And if I go back to the project, close this, if we have a quick look at the card UI or the, let's go to the uh, scripts UI card element, the cards, oh, that's not the right one, which is the one I'm on about. So yeah, what I meant was the card manager and this handles actually giving the player the cards and registering their events. So there's a lot of code here, but the important part here is when we uh, have a card, we subscribe to the mouse down, mouse up and mouse move event. So when the mouse goes down on a card, it simply changes the render order, so the hierarchy order. It enables that little area where it shows us that we can't place our units, stores which card we're dragging, and also where we clicked, and then simply for a card dragged, it will just figure out where we're moving, move the card to our mouse position. It will then raycast on the ground to see if we hit the ground, then hide the card and spawn in the preview of the card that we're actually dragging as a like physical model and it'll then um, parent that, as it says here, parents it to the card preview, so as we move the card around, it'll move with us. And if it already exists, then it'll just move it instead of you know spawning it in every frame. And then when we release our mouse button, it'll obviously then see, you know, did we um, raycast in a valid area? If we did, then we actually, we raise an event, say this card was used, and then we spawn in the, the unit itself and get rid of the card. So you can actually do quite sophisticated stuff right now, and you know, I'm not saying this is how it's gonna be on release. They might make the code uh, a lot simpler to do the same thing. They, they'll add a lot more tools for sure. And they'll just make it a bit less buggy because right now it is a little buggy. So as I mentioned, this isn't a video to necessarily make you use it right now, but if you're interested in it and it's exciting to you and you, you like the idea of you know using CSS and all that fun stuff, then sure, have a go and try using the new system. But as I said, this is what Unity is moving towards. So I'm not sure how long it will be before this is gonna be the norm. I don't know how long it'll be before they remove the old UI system or if they even will, maybe they'll try and keep both active at the same time. But I'll definitely be doing more videos on this. So if you want to see me make anything in particular from scratch, cause this was more of an overview, uh, let me know down below whether you want to see health bars, main menu screens, whatever. And I'll be sure to cover that in the next few videos. Thanks as always for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye. But of course, before we go, I've got to thank my patrons. Special thanks to Taylor Rustio, Francisco Lira, Liz Kimber, Luis Ramos, Jake Nixon, Benjamin Hilda, Sam Marcus, Matt Fryer, Malvin, John Selig, David McDermott, Exit, Bidodai, Dustin Miller, Rack, and Yoris Letter. If anyone else is able to help support the channel monetarily, link to my Patreon is down below, as well as links to other social media, such as Twitch, Twitter, and Discord. If you could help us out by following on any of those or checking any of those out, that'd be greatly appreciated, and I'll see you in the next one.